This video is going over a math strategy that we use in math and science called cubes. This is used to help on word problems and it is really beneficial especially for those students who have some reading comprehension issues. They may be very good at math computation but <clears throat> they may have trouble knowing what the problem is when they're reading a, a word problem. So the steps for cubes are to circle the key numbers, underline the question, box any math words, evaluate, and solve. And I will use a very simple example to show how that works, and then I will apply it to a more complex fifth grade math problem <clears throat> that some a lot of kids had trouble with uh, the other day. So. The problem here is Chris has two cards, Donna has eight cards. If Donna gives all her cards to Chris, how many cards will Chris have? Well, the first step is to circle key numbers. So I'm going to circle this and circle this. So I did that step. Next, underline the question. So the question is, how many cards will Chris have? Let me erase that. There we go. So I did that. So... I know my problem has something to do with those, those numbers, and how many cards will Chris have? That tells me this is what I'm looking for. This is my objective. It helps me focus on it. Now I'm going to box any math action words. I'm going to say has. That's what he starts with. I'm not going to box cards. I don't really care if he has cards or if he has balloons or whatever. Um, Donna has. Donna gives all to Chris, how many will Chris have? Okay, so that's a lot of boxed words, but they should be helpful because um, I just, I, I have a lot of words here that are not boxed or circled. Uh, I definitely don't need those or care about them. So the evaluate step this is the most important step, I, I feel. The evaluate step, um, what I do is I have them write down all the stuff they boxed and circled, but in a way that's organized. So I'm going to say Chris has two. And I'm not going to write that they're cards. I don't care that they're cards. Donna has eight um, Donna gives all her cards to Chris, so I'll say Donna gives all to Chris, and how many does Chris have? So the question is, how many does Chris have? Okay, so I just rewrote everything. Um, I should be able to just ignore this entire thing and solve it just but with this information down here. That's very important. If you can't solve the problem um, just by looking at the stuff that's written down, then you haven't written the right, the right stuff. So, Chris has two of something. Donna has eight of something. Donna gives all of hers to Chris. How many does Chris have? So, reading this, it's very clear that I have 2 uh, plus 8 because uh, Donna's going to give all of her 8 to Chris, and then I'm going to add them together, and I get 10. And that's my solve step. Okay? So that's, that's cubes and a very simple problem. Now let's do that with a compli more complex problem on the next slide. On an average day, a garden snail can travel about five hundredths of a mile. The snail travels two-tenths times as far as the average distance on day one. It travels six-tenths times as far as the average distance on day two. How far does it travel in two days? Okay, so I'm going to use cubes. I'm going to circle the numbers here. There's a number here. 
There's a number here, there's a number here. I also have day one and day two. I'm not going to circle those because they're not really meaningful as far as, comp as as solving the problem goes. They're just saying this happens on day one, this happens on day two. You're not actually using those numbers to multiply or add or anything like that. So I'm going to underline the question, how far does it travel in two days? And I'm going to box important words. So I would say... Um, Average day. Um, I'm not going to box miles because everything's in miles here. Um, the um, times as far is important because that tells me uh, I need to multiply. It just says times right there. Um, I'm going to box as because I need to know times as times what you know times and then this has the average distance. And I'm going to box day one, because I want it to be clear that all this stuff is happening on day one. Um, 0.6 times as far as the average distance on day two. So that's what's happening on day two. How far in two days? Okay, so I'm going to write down all this stuff that I boxed and sorted. So I see, I see that an average day, let's say the average distance in a day would be 0 0.05 miles. Okay? Um, the snail travels on day one, the snail travels 0 0.2 times as far, and I'm just using the time symbol there, as the average distance. So I'm going to say two times the average distance, and then on Day two, the snail travels 0.6 times the average distance. And then the question is, how far in two days? Okay. <clears throat> so, I've just, uh, I've made this problem much simpler. If the average distance is, is 5 hundredths of a mile, uh, day one is 0.2 times that. Day two, the snail travels 0.6 times that. How far did he travel in two days? So first thing I need to do is solve this part. Two times the average distance. So I have um, the average distance is 0 0.05 and I multiply that by 0.2 and, uh, so 5 times 2 is 10, and there are 3 digits after my decimal. So I put my pencil at the end, and I go 1, 2, 3. Whoop. And then I fill that space with a 0. So day 1, day 1, the snail traveled 0 0.01 miles. Okay, so for day 2, the snail traveled 0 0.6 times the average distance. So I'm going to... The average distance, once again, is 0 0.05. I multiply that by 0 0.6. 5 times 6 is 30. I circle all the digits after the decimal in my problem. In my problem, and there's three of them, so I move my decimal one, two, three places to the left. Boop! And I put a zero there, so it's 0 0.03. So day two is 0 0.03. So the question is how far in two days? So I just add those two days together and I get 0 0.04 and that is how I get D as my answer. Four hundredths of a mile. Now it feels like there's a lot going on here but what we're doing is we are pulling this problem apart. We're, take, we're finding all the important information, we're putting it on the side there's no mention of snails or gardens or anything like that, or traveling, because we don't care about any of that. We just care about the average distance, uh, because day one, it's uh, two-tenths of that. Day two is six-tenths of that, and how far did you go in two days? It's very simple, straightforward. So have your, student, have your children use this method when they get stuck. When I'm in class, and they tell me that, that when they're working on a word problem, they tell me I don't get it, what I tell them is, and then if they haven't used cubes, I tell them, as you need to use cubes first before I can help you. You have to use, you have to do every single step. 
We want students in fifth grade who are about ready to go to uh, middle school to be self-sufficient and to be able to solve things on their own.